Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem here. We're back in Foundry VTT. I want to do a little bit of a recap in this video uh, because we've, we've been doing lots of different things, creating all sorts of things, playing with automation, um, etc. Um, but what we have not done for a while is just check everything works together, uh, especially if there's been an update to the uh, 3.0 game engine um, that's now installed. So uh, I thought we'd run this through. So what I've done is uh, I have re-imported Sorryman um, and I have bumped him up. He's now sixth level um, because I want to check a number of different functions and factors of some of these characters, make sure all of our automations are working, make sure our combat is working as we expected because you want to know that up front before you start actually uh, running the game with these people. And I thought bumping up to sixth level is going to cover most players introductory you know not many people play much beyond 10th or 12th level and certainly my players we tend to stop around 10 um depend on the campaign of course uh, so i just thought i would give this a go so just as a reminder of what we're actually testing here if i go to my modules just to show you what the active modules we have running at the moment so a lot of these are helpful for setting up um, for setting up our maps and everything else and not necessarily direct related to play but we have got uh, active auras active token effects advanced macros to support a few things automated animations uh, build a bonus which is one we added recently I'm not going to be needing it for this video but it's in there our combat carousel uh, sorry our carousel combat tracker say it the right way around D&D uh, &D 5e animations uh, we've got the DDB importer that we'll look at in a second. Fred's convenient effects uh, dice, so nice. Drag ruler, dynamic effects. Um, item piles is in here. We've got item macros, again, not really relevant in this particular video. Uh, JB2A's animated assets. We've got MIDI QOL, which is driving a lot of our automation. And the way that I've got that set up is... For the DM, rolls, damage, everything is fully automated uh, because it makes life really easy for the DM. But for the players, it's still manual rolls for them. Uh, and I want to keep that. That's how I want it to be. Uh, Monk's active tile trigger is not really relevant to this. Monk's token bar, um, that does apply a little bit in the background for this sequencer, which helps run some of our things in the background. Time's up, which controls when our effects ends. Um token attached token the token magic effects we've got on there uh tokenizer and the only thing i've added that we didn't have before is warp gate uh, and i'll tell you why in a second so first of all let's go to let's go to sorry man i'm just going to double click to open him up here uh, and if i go top left of his character sheet to this cog icon we've got our D, D beyond importer so that's the link for the character so I re-imported Sorryman from D&D &D Beyond. I leveled him to sixth level there, just so I could make sure that that was all correct. Um, and partly to test, make sure everything imports correctly. So yes, even if it works well inside Foundry, are we importing correct stuff that then functions inside Foundry? So these are the options I'm using for that. Um, you can pause the video and look at those in a bit more detail don't have any companions to import uh, I'm not necessarily updating um, back to D&D &D Beyond you'll notice this button here says update available to patron supporters I'm not a patron supporter because again while I have no problem with donating to money who put people little, money to people who are doing this much work um, in the background I want to make sure as much as possible that this is available for everybody the cheap options uh, and under automation here, um, it's just talking about what it wants to bring in and how it's going to utilize it. And you can see just under these tick boxes here, highly uh, these are highly automated and require the following modules. DAE, MIDI QOL, Time's Up, Convenient Effects we've all got. Optional but recommended, Active Auras, Token Effects and Warp Gate. And I didn't have Warpgate installed because I've not needed it yet. Now, Warpgate is particularly useful for when you're summoning animals and things like that. Sorryman's not going to be doing any of that, but I wanted to bring Warpgate in um, and make sure I had that added on so that when I import my character on the front screen here, 
everything's coming over as I want it to, um, bringing everything in and it should work for all of our characters. So I'm going to do a few videos like this looking at different characters, just checking all of their skills and functions are working as expected. So we're starting with Sorryman. Um, so just for those of you who have not been following or I haven't really paid that much attention because why would you? Sorryman is a sixth level barbarian. So he's got features like his rage, uh, reckless attack. Um, I've also given him... Um, so his main weapon is a quarterstaff, which of course is versatile, one or two-handed. So that's a useful thing for us to check. Um, he's got his reckless attack and his rage, as I mentioned, unarmored defense. Uh, and a lot of these things are, are actually... Um, you know, automatically. Uh, what are they? What are they? They're um, they're applied automatically. What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> they're not. I don't need to activate them. Um, and uh, he's got some magic initiate stuff as well. So he's actually got access to some spells. Uh, it's just to do with his background and and how I decided to make him. He's a bit of a weird one. Um, so he can cast Catapult, Shocking Grasp, to True Strike, Speak with Animals, and he's got Beast Scent. So he's got a whole bunch of different things going on here um, that we want to check and test. So here he is. It's all good. He's ready to go. And I've decided to set him up against an Owlbear. Um, now, Owlbears, Beak Attack, Claw, claw Attack. They have got Multi Attack, so they do both of those. Um, that Beak Attack is uh, D10 plus 5 Piercing. And that claw damage is 2d8 plus 5 slashing. So that's quite a hefty chunk of damage for Sorryman to deal with um, at 6th level, taking on an owlbear all by himself. Um, I don't know. I think actually it's a reasonably easy... It's a, it's a challenging fight for Sorryman. He could win it, but this thing's got 59 hit points. He's really going to have to dish out the damage. Okay, so... Um, how do I start this combat? Now, obviously I'm looking... I'm in the GM screen at the moment. But I can just select all the tokens and whack my little uh, combat thing there and you can see the combat carousel at the top has immediately jumped up um, to show us what's going on up here and I can roll because I'm in the DM screen just flip over to our messages here I can roll my initiative for that so Albert has got a 15. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my screens around so you've got the Sorryman version so you can watch the player version of it and what happens and the uh, the Foundry GM screen you're looking at now will actually be on my other monitor. So give me a second I'm just going to flip those over. There we go, all flipped. So we're now in as Sorryman. I have got the game unpaused. I remembered to do that. Uh, you can see actually I'm logged in as the server. My, it's just called server, but it's actually the GM login. Uh, so this is Sorryman himself. So he needs to roll his own initiative. So as the player, I roll my own initiative. Uh, and that's a 12, uh, so he's got a 15 as well. So I'm obviously going to have to keep popping to the other screen to do things like click start combat which I just have and you can hear the noises in the background as it does some of that you know those sound effects and things like that okay so it's very kindly decided that Sorryman is going first so let's make sure we can see what's going on here because we've got some animations and things going on uh, and we just have Sorryman's character sheet open on this side now I think the first thing he's going to do is going to move up to this Albert. He can do his Reckless Attack. That's a special. Um, it doesn't actually take any time for him to do that. He can automatically do Reckless Attack. So straight away, we've got two conditions applied to Sorryman. One of those conditions is for this round only, he gets advantage on attack rolls. And the other one is until his next turn, he has disadvantage, or rather, anybody attacking him has advantage attacking him as well. Uh, but that's free. So he can also choose to rage immediately. So it's going to ask him if he wants to consume one of his abilities. Yes. We get a little animation. I, I, I put the chain one on. I'm not necessarily in love with that. And we can see we've got two more icons. We've got a little star icon to say he's used his bonus action. 
uh, and we've got his rage there and he's got this glowing little aura to show that he's raging. So he's used his bonus action, he's done a little bit of movement, he's still got his actual attack so I need to uh, press T hovering over it to target that. And we can see in the chat log here it's telling us what's happening. I don't really need this server one coming up for the players but there we go. Um, right, so he currently has his shield as well. So he's got his shield and his quarter staff. Now quarter staff is a versatile weapon, so he can use it one or two handed. Obviously, with his shield out, he's only going to be hitting one handed. So remember, as a player, I click on quarter staff and I'm manually doing my attack roll. It's at advantage. That's correct. It should be. We get a little animation of uh, him twatting it with the stick, um, and it tells the yes to hit the owlbear. It doesn't tell me for the player what the AC is. It just tells me that that hit, which is what I want. Roll my damage, and it sees it applied that damage for us, which is great. And I can see on the DM screen it's giving me that information, which is brilliant. Okay, so uh, he's used his reckless attack, which gave him an advantage on that attack roll. Um, he's done his damage, normal damage, and it's applied that. That all looks good. Now, if we just look at his features, of course, he gets can attack twice instead of once whenever he takes the attack action. So he's got that second attack he's going to take. Again, it's still at advantage. Uh, that's another hit. He can roll his damage, not versatile. Another eight points of damage. Excellent, good stuff. And he's not going to move any further. He is done. He can't see how badly damaged the owlbear is, which is great. Um, and then he can just click on his sheet there. Now, straight away, we saw his advantage for his attacks from Reckless Attack has automatically disappeared, which is brilliant. That's what we want to see. Now hopping over, me hopping over, you can see my server icon moving over here. I'm just hopping over to the other screen. Um, did you see that blue dot appear above Soriman's token? That shows he's been targeted by something and it's because I've just targeted him, targeted him <laughs> um, by the owlbear. Uh, and we're going to start off with that beak attack against Soriman. So Soriman is going to see those dice roll. He's going to see that hits. He's going to see that damage. Now, what's good here is Soriman's card here says that it tells Soriman that the owlbear has attacked using its beak attack at advantage, which it should be because Soriman's reckless attack. Um, one of those was a 17, so that's going to hit, and it shows you down here that that was a hit. Uh, and then it's going to do piercing damage, which it did a total of 7 damage. How much damage does Soriman take though? He took three because he is raging uh, and for him he, um, he has, uh, which one is it? Um, when he's raging it says that he, um, da, 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 resistance to bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage. So he should be taking half damage and he is, which is perfect. Okay, so that's working exactly how we want it to. All right, um, but we've got claws to do as well. So claw attack, again, still at advantage. Ouch. All right. So again, we can see on Sorryman's, we've got that claw attack. Natural 20, absolutely. And it has rolled that as a critical against him, which is good. Um, and just in the DM screen, I can see that they, that was a total of 19 points of damage. But Sorryman took 9 points of damage again because of the resistance. So that's really good. That's all working exactly how we wanted it to. Now it's Soriman's go. We've he's just lost his um, penalty from reckless attack, and he's lost that icon that showed that he had his bonus. He'd used his bonus action, so that's really good. So we're now back to Soriman again. He's still raging, but no reckless attack. He could use reckless attack again, but obviously that is detrimental to him, to say the least. So let's make a just a normal court staff attack here. Do our damage. Or rather do our attack. Yes, that hits. Oh, normal damage for this. Which is going to apply. And we saw that 9 damage applied. Again, he can't see the total health um, of the owlbear. But trust me, he's doing okay. Now, of course, he gets his second attack as well. Ah, your pants. So the good thing is now he's missed. It's removed that damage button. So the player can't automatically go and click damage. <laughs> I missed. I'll click damage anyway and just watch it apply in the background. Nope, it's removed that option. 
can't do it. It just tells him that you missed, mate. Tough. Uh, he hasn't got an awful lot else he could do. He's already raging. Um, he could tavern brawl grapple. He's not going to grapple an owlbear. That's quite ridiculous. I mean, he could. He could try. And chances are he wouldn't be too bad with it because of how I built him. But, um, yeah, we're not going to do that. All right, so back to the owlbears go. Uh, it's just going to do its normal beak attack. Good. It's not at advantage this time, and it shouldn't be. But we're getting our little animations. We're getting our damage applied and things like that, which is great. Now with that claw attack, 18. We get that little slashy claw attack. Uh, and again, it is halving the damage. So everything appears to be working exactly how we want it, which is really good. That makes me happy. Okay, so now Soryman's going to do something slightly different because he really wants to pile on the damage here. He's going to drop his shield. And he can just chuck it on the battlefield. So yeah, I could have just clicked the icon in his character sheet for him to be not using it. But I just wanted to show the fact that we can do that. We can just chuck items, like literally throw it to one side. You can just tell your players, or just drag it wherever it is you're throwing it to. Bosh, it's now on the floor. Now, if Soryman gets moved away from that area, he can't just say, oh, I'll get my shield out again. It's like, no, if you dropped it, you dropped it, mate. You have to go back and collect it later. But it does mean that he is now free to do his quarter staff attack and use his versatile damage to really pump up the pain a bit here. So, yep, another hit. We still get our animation. Click our versatile damage. Uh, yes. That's correct. Oh, yeah, that made me worry for a second there. Yeah. <laughs> his versatile damage. He's done that and that's applied. Um, and then again, he can have his second attack here. Another one and versatile damage again. Rubbish. Your pants, mate. Um, this is, I'm just looking at the owlbear's hit points. The owlbear uh, currently has 21 hit points left out of 59. This is actually much closer than I thought it would be. <laughs> Um, however, Soryman doesn't have his shield anymore, so he's a bit easier to hit. Uh, right, beak attack from the owlbear. Yep, that's going to hurt. Uh, and now claw attack as well. Ouch. Ouch, or oh, so Soryman's in a bad way right now. Uh, so he's pretty much in a situation. Now, has Soryman got any healing at all? I don't think he's got anything in his backpack. Um, he's got no spells that do healing. And he's got no healing stuff here. So that's one thing I'm going to have to make sure I do with another character. Is make sure that they've got healing. So we can check healing potions as well as spells and things like that. So Soryman, you're just going to have to... Mate, you've got to do 21 points of damage uh, before you actually get hit again. So good luck with that. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. Do that versatile damage. Do you know what? It's totally possible. <laughs> it's totally possible. His second attack. Uh, unlucky. He didn't. No. Okay. Owlbears go, which is likely to be the last one of this combat. Or maybe not. Now, it still rolls the damage dice, even though it didn't hit. The good thing is it's not applying that damage. Uh, but, you jammy, jammy git. <laughs> okay, it just missed twice. <laughs> wow. I mean, D&D, &D, don't you love it? You just can never predict, can you? Um, you know, with those dice rolls. And I, I knew this would be a challenging fight for Soryman, but I, I thought it would be close, but he would lose. But uh, well, it's not over yet. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. He's got his second attack. What's he need? He needs to do 11 points of damage with this. Now he could use his reckless attack to pretty much guarantee the next one's going to hit. And in fact he's only got three hit points. So the chances are the owlbear is going to strike him down on its go. So let's use that. And I should have used that the first at the beginning using that logic. But there we go. His second attack he can certainly take advantage of that. And even part way through, it is going to allow him to do that. He can now pump out that versatile damage for 10 damage. The owlbear is on one hit point now. Um, bonus action. <laughs> is there anything he can do that will do one point of damage as a bonus action? 
Uh, and it's a shame things like uh, some of the spells he's got, none of them are a bonus action spell. So Shocking Grasp needs a full action, so he can't be doing that. Um, and Catapult isn't useful in this situation. Um, yeah, he hasn't got anything else at all. I mean, Tavern Brawler, that's a whole action for an attack. Um, and even though he's got things like, yeah, it's an action. The only one is the bonus action for the grapple. Um, that's it. So he's just going to have to suck this up. Okay. Uh, again, it's got rid of the active effect for his bonuses, but it's left the active effect for the owlbear's bonuses, which pretty much it's, it's not going to miss this, is it? This, this is unreal. It's not going to miss this one though. Surely it can't. Oh, uh, there's a 16. Okay. Sorryman takes the damage and it automatically incapacitated him. Um, <laughs> which is not surprising because he's gone down. Now, the one thing it hasn't done is... Now, it's fair enough that it's left the um, effect, the fact that anybody gets a uh, advantage against attacking him. Um, but it's left his rage on. So that rage should have ended when he went incapacitated. Is that a big problem? No, it's not. As the DM, um, I can just go in and you know, disable it. If I want to. Um, and do it that way. That's not a big problem. And of course, we've got defreds where I can just select that character and go, oh, just clear them all and it would clear everything if I wanted to. Um, be nice if we automated that, but that's fine. That's that's okay. So everything we tested in this um, has worked. Let me bring back my DM screen over here. So we've got all of these are very nice. What it's telling us here, I could get rid of a couple of these server ones. Um, not a big deal. As you can see, the Albert literally was down onto one hit point, which is uh, I was I'm surprised. Really, am surprised. Um, and when we're ending combat, it's automatically wanting to assign XP. If I wanted to do that, I don't need to. I can just close that window. Um, but of course, I could have done that. Uh, right. So, oops, I've got them both selected. So that might have gone, it might have taken longer if Sorryman... Oh, I need to show... I should have shown Sorryman. Let me show Sorryman. Back over here a second. Let me... Uh, Sorryman magically gets this healing. He should be able to heal himself like that. Yes, he heals himself automatically, not incapacitated anymore. Um, and he should be able to, as the character, take that shield. Notice the item pile has disappeared automatically. And we've got his shield back in his inventory that he can now apply if he wants to. Okay, so that all works really, really well. I'm really happy with that. Um, so just healing these people up, I'm happy to say that apart from not removing rage when he goes incapacitated, everything is working exactly how we would want it. Want it. Um, yeah, cool. Oh, look, it does actually tell us as well down here that Saruman picked up the shield from the item pile as well, just so the DM can keep track of things. Uh, I hope that was interesting. I'm going to work through a number of different characters. I need to do this with a priest. I need to do it with a wizard. I need to do it with a rogue. Check things like sneak, sneak attack and stuff like that. Um, it's working really well for Soriman. I'm really chuffed with that. I'm happy to carry on actual play up to 6th level with barbarians in the party. Just want to check the other bits as well. Thanks for watching, guys. If you've got particular character combinations do you think it would be really useful to check, I am going to go through all the basic ones. Um, happy to do that. We'll make sure everything works as we need it to. See ya.